All right, now let's talk about decoding contracts on Dune. You can get to the contract decoding page by just going up here to create and then submit a contract. As always, we have all of this documented in our documentation. So go to web app and then decoding contracts if you're more curious about um, how exactly our decoding process works and learning some of the more technical bits about uh, proxies or factories uh, or Solana contracts as well. Uh, we provide decoding for all Ethereum as well as Solana contracts. Uh, the easiest way to do that is by submitting any address into our contract submission uh, page. All right, so let's say I have this Lido execution rewards contract that I want decoded. Oh, and if you're wondering, you know, why would people even use decoding to begin with? Again, if I went to different like Uniswap V2 contracts, and just went to any transaction here and just you check the raw data, uh, a lot of the times you're working with bytes, right? So then you have to use a bunch of custom var, var binary functions. You have to you know, filter logs by topics uh, and it shows up as hex. So a lot of these times it's much easier. Just plug that contract address into here. I can just enter it in here. It'll start the process and in this case, it's already been decoded uh, to the by Lido Analytical. That's the team. This is when it was decoded by, and this is the actual table as well, right? So if you click on this, it pulls you to the all of the tables related to this contract. Uh, but for some reason, if I wanted to submit it, you would normally get this page. You can put in a project name. This contract will be taken uh, directly from. Um, this contract will be taken directly from the Etherscan naming as well as the ABI. And if this is a factory contract or just the contract that's been deployed with the same bytecode many times, make sure you click these, All right? Um, another small tip, make sure you submit the implementation if it is a proxy. Uh, we'll do some automatic decoding for you. Then you can go ahead and submit it. And if you wanna see where, where what's happening with your contract submissions, you're gonna to go to your own user settings, you're gonna to go to contracts, uh, and you can actually see um, submissions here that I've made that get approved, or if it gets rejected, uh, the reason for the rejection here, All right? Uh, once it's approved, it'll take a full day to ingest in our systems, so check back the next day to start querying those tables. Uh, I do wanna quickly cover two concepts here. One is the proxy implementations, and the other is how factories work, All right? So. If you're ever submitting to coding and you're not sure if it's a proxy or not, um, and you also don't know if it's a factory or not, just go to the Explorer. So in this case, I'm plugging in uh, Zor 1155. Uh, and if you go click on contract, uh, and on Etherscan, you'll also find the contract tab. You'll be able to see if there's a read or write proxy option that kind of tells you if you're looking at the proxy. Um, so if this is a proxy, then you probably want to go and go to the implementation address and then go from the implementation address to pull the ABI, which is gonna be at the bottom of the page, right? That's gonna be this, right? This was what you would paste in for a proxy, right? And if you wanna know if it's a factory or not, um, go to the contract page. Again, looks the same on Etherscan. There's gonna be a creation transaction link and you can check, uh, you know, was the contract directly deployed? Uh, if it has this kind of contract created parentheses, it is directly deployed. Otherwise, uh, if I go back again, um, oh, otherwise, if I was to say to go to a Uniswap V2, uh, contract, uh, I'll be able to see that the creation transaction actually called another contract, which then deployed this new contract, right? So in this case, this is a factory created contract, right? Uh, so that all shows up under, for example, if I take this random Uniswap contract, It's going to show up here. It was a several instances uh, 
yes, it is factory created. You could have several instances where it's not factory created as well. Uh, so that is an extra option that you might have to check for. So a lot of the times if you're missing data, for example, if you submiss submitted Unisoft V2 as a, as a single instance and not as a factory creation, then you'd be like, oh, I'm only getting data from one pool. I'm missing data from all these other pools. It's because you didn't click. Uh, this is several instances and this is a factory. Once it is decoded, uh, you can just you know click on one of these names. It'll take you to the data explorer uh, on a new query. You can also just find this by navigating into decoded projects and then searching. Uh, and now you'll have all of your decoded tables nicely in here. For example, I can take the minted event and then select all from, uh, and I can start working with this data. Um, sometimes when you start querying the data, it hasn't fully decoded everything yet um, since it's backfilling the table. So if sometimes it's right after you've decoded and you're wondering like, oh, why is the table not, doesn't have as much, like the number of mints doesn't seem right. It's because we're probably still backfilling the data, right? So in the first day or so after the coding submission, give us some time to fill in. So that's everything on decoding. Thank you.